Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is a returning client. You can refer back to her first session with me. Um, this is about three months of regrowth and her first session was me, with me was three months ago. Um, you can refer back to it on episode 119. She had some previous color on her end and she essentially wants to go as light as possible she would love to have some sort of silver or gray tones in her hair and just overall be lighter and ashier so today we're gonna go in and pretty much lighten everything so typically if a client is doing multiple sessions with me and trying to go a bit lighter i prefer them to wait at least six weeks that means i don't want them coming in any sooner than six weeks only because i need their hair to have a little bit of a break because of the lightning i normally do not like to do multiple sessions of lightning in less than six weeks just to be on the safe side and then I don't like my clients waiting any more than I would say three to four months if they want to go lighter because anything beyond that, their roots get really, really long and it makes it a little harder to go lighter overall if your roots have grown out too much. So anywhere between um, it's like a 10 to 12 week mark is preferred is what I usually tell my clients to come back in if they're wishing to go lighter. So for her last appointment, we did a full color transformation and today we are doing another full color transformation. So I will be lightening everything that I did not lighten as far as the roots from her last session and then as well as lightening the ends that are um, that were highlighted last time when I did lighten her so that she can feel overall lighter. So last time when she did come in, her ends were pretty stubborn because she had some previous color on them. Um, but she did overall get a lot lighter than I thought she would because she's naturally so dark. And you guys can't tell from this video, but she has so much hair. Like, it, I don't even think I can wrap my whole hand around her ponytail. That's how thick her ponytail is. Um... And so after all the color and stuff, we're going to definitely give her a really good haircut um, because her, even though we cut it last time, we do need to dust her ends, get rid of her split ends, and then as well just take out weight in general because her hair tends to get a little bit on the poofy side because she has such thick, coarse hair and she has so much of it. So technique wise is if you've seen all my other videos, this is probably a review for you, but if you're new to my channel, so what I normally like to do is I will detail the hairline first and depending on how light they want to be, I'll do like one to two foils right on the hairline where the nape is, diagonal backs to where they connect into sort of like a V shape. And then I will just start going up the head taking a center section up the back and I do the center section up the back because I just like to hit the back all in one section I don't like to split the back into two because it just saves you a lot of time especially if you have a client who has this much hair trust me you're gonna need the little extra time to go and lighten her um, ends as well so I just do the back in one all the way through the mohawk or um, wherever she parts her hair and I will connect the front and the back with um, taking horizontal sections and I'll show you that later. So the idea of my technique that I am approaching her hair with is she first came to me and wanted to be gray and silver and just as light as possible uh, without bleaching her hair completely solid. So in order to do that, I usually will do 
slices back to back because I find that slices give the most amount of impact. You'll get a lot of color out of it compared to doing a weave. And then secondly, it just makes it really easy for me to retouch it. Um, for instance, today, I'm going in and pretty much just taking slices of the hair that I did not slice last time. And as I'm sectioning through her hair, you can see it's very easy for me to see where the black slice is that I left out, like that negative space that I left out last time. And so it just makes it super easy for me to see that and make sure that I'm not overlapping because you know sometimes when you retouch like a highlight or something or even a baby light and you spend extra time just like sectioning out the previous highlights, it takes so much time to do that and then on top of that, it's not ever perfect too. So I find that slicing is just healthier, faster, and my clients will feel a lot lighter that way too. And for the products I'm using, I'm using the Blonde Me Sports Cough Lightener. Um, I always do a first bowl of like mixture of 6 volume and 20 volume to kind of make my formula a little bit weaker. And then after that first bowl of lightener, I just stick with 20 volume throughout the whole head. I find that that works best for me and the way that I time myself with my clients. So as I move towards her money piece here, you can see that very first foil I just did a slice. I want her money piece to be nice and bright and have a really big pop. So that is why I'm pretty much slicing this part because I want her to feel super light. And later down the line, if she changes her mind, it's really easy for me to change the money piece too. Like let's say next time she comes in and she doesn't want something that's too harsh of a grow out where her hairline is. Like let's say some clients, if they feel like their money piece is too solid or um, their roots really bugged them. Sometimes it's because their money piece is too bold. Um, so just creating a little bit of softness, breaking it up can definitely soften that line of demarcation. So it just really depends. And um, just like with wording and verbiage, you can try and figure out what your clients are trying to say as far as how they would like their color next time and how you can tweak it to better fit their needs. So sometimes too, when a client is wanting to do like full transformation like this, I will try to weave them super duper solid um, because I want them to get as light as possible and I'm trying to get rid of as much dark as possible in one sitting. So that's why I'm weaving her or like just slicing her super close together. You can see my sections are very close together. So she overall is going to feel really light and majority of the hair more on the solid side. So when this happens, if a client is able to get to their goal or if I feel like their hair just can't take it anymore, then at that session that um, we are not doing a full transformation anymore, which means we're lightening everything, um, then I ask them if like how their roots grow in and if it bugged them or when it started to bug them because if they're coming in in like 10 weeks 8 to 10 weeks and they're like oh my gosh lord my roots were really bugging me i feel like it was just so harsh against my natural because they went so light compared to how naturally dark they are then i kind of give them the option that we can soften their grow out meaning leaving more dimension or now beginning to weave instead of doing slices to kind of soften the line of demarcation or when it grows out because once they're at their goal or wherever their hair allows them to be that's when you can start blending and softening that grow out so that they can go a little bit longer and that they feel like their hair still looks good, even if it's past that like 10 to 12 week mark. And honestly, that part just depends on the client. Like it varies by each person. Some people might like the way that the solid grows out and some people might hate it. Um, and you'll the client will only know once they live through it and you ask them, when did your roots start to bug you or how is the grout? If they loved the way that it grew out and they want to do the exact same thing, then do the exact same thing. Keep picking up the dark and keeping them nice and light and solid. But definitely if they're 
you're a client who feels like they came in too soon, they kind of want to go a little bit longer in between or have something even lower maintenance, then I would definitely consider or even offer doing something a little bit softer, a little more dimensional at the root so that they can go a little bit longer as well. So as I'm connecting that front money piece, I did a slice and now I'm doing a small weave there um, just to kind of give a little bit of softness at the hairline even though there is a slice underneath that. And then after I finish connecting that side money piece right above the ear i'm going to connect that front foil to the very first foil in the nape of the neck um, with a foil right on top and that foil generally i will always weave i almost like never put a slice there because i feel like it would give such a awkward harsh line so this part i always always weave on pretty much everybody i don't think i've ever done a slice there um, just to kind of break it up and give some color to blend and connect that front and back because the back i for sure did a weave and you just want a slight graduation make sure that everything flows and looks intentional and doesn't have any harsh lines so now I'm just going to pretty much continue up the sides taking horizontal sections. Um, sometimes they can be a little bit slight diagonal back, just depends on the placement. But again, so as I'm doing the sides here, I am trying to slice out the chunks of dark that I left out her last appointment. You can see that it's very easy for me to find and then any previous highlights, I am trying to carefully pick them out so that I don't um, overlap or over process her hair at all. So another thing that I really need to be mindful of whenever doing um, a full transformation on hair that is coarse and darker is to take very thin sections. You want to make sure that you're fully saturating and gives the lightener enough um, room to process around the hair so if you take a section that is way too thick definitely you can get some unevenness it will lift the same in um, every spot so you want to make sure that they're nice and thin and see-through and i don't like to fold the foil wherever i've placed lightener so that is why i've made some custom length foils just for these sections because again i really don't want any warm spots i want to try and get the cleanest lift possible and the only way to do that is to take clean sections saturate enough and try to avoid folding the foil where you've placed product So essentially whenever I have a client who has like previous color on their ends and it's kind of unpredictable how light they want to be, even though they want to be super light, um, some of the things I tell them prior to beginning the service is I ask them if there's any other options that they're willing to do besides the color that um, is their goal because if they have previous color on their ends and they're asking to be something super blonde or super light sometimes it will take definitely like a few sessions so it's always good to have like backup plan of colors so you get a sense of what else they would be open to so it gives you a lot of cushion and room and you don't feel super pressured to um, get them super light or damage your hair or anything like that So I always make sure that when there's a color correction like this or we're dealing with color that might not lift um, The way that you want it to that we always have a backup plan and then an extra black backup plan to your normal backup plan to make sure um, That they will be happy regardless of what level they are lifted to Okay, so after I've foiled her head, you can see she has so many foils. Now I'm going in and just kind of tipping out the previous color on her ends. So for this lightener, I'm using a cream bleach and I mixed that with 10 volume and I put a little bit of B3, which is B3 bonder to kind of help um, keep the strength in the hair as it lightens up. I knew that I didn't want this part to get too, too light, so I let this process just of the chair like this before um, 
I put her in the dryer for a little bit because this part it was going to process quite fast for me and I just kept an eye on it and just make sure that I was really saturating and really working the lightener into the parts that were necessary. There's a little processing shot. You can see I put a little bit of cotton in between some of my foils. So the reason why I like to put a little bit of cotton in between some of my foils is because sometimes the foils do kind of expand or start to slip. So I put the cotton in between to kind of help prevent any bleed spots. So once her roots reached a pretty much level 9 and 10 in some areas, I started to take out the foils and we started to rinse out some of the tip outs in the ends since they were t definitely ready. Um, I just kept checking them, pinching them to make sure that they were okay. And once they reached like pretty much a level nine and 10, um, some of the areas were like an eight. I rinsed it out um, and let the rest process under the dryer. Um, I probably put the dryer on like low to medium heat because um, since she has so much hair, clients who have a lot of hair tend to um, have a lot of body heat as well. So sometimes that body heat can transfer into the foils. So when that happens, if you have longer foils like she does here, sometimes her body heat can help um, process the foils a little bit quicker but it would only process the foils a little bit quicker right at the root so I throw the ends of the foils in the dryers to kind of help um, mimic the body, body heat that is transferred through the roots to kind of get an even lift because if I just let her process naturally um, with out the dryer then the roots would definitely get a little bit lighter than that mids and ends there so for her toner, I had my assistant Jen put on her root shade. Her root shade formula is a liquid demi permanent, which is a non-lifting um, demi permanent color, meaning it won't budge or affect any of the virgin hair that is in between her highlights. So I like to use this for the root shadow because I feel like it gives a really good pigment in the root shade and then as well it gives pretty good coverage all over and so I'm using a level 6 ash and then later we are going to apply her lighter shade toners so now that her root shade is fully applied I'm going in and applying her um, silver color so I've mixed up a toner that works it's called a rapid toner and it is a mixture of the silver and violet rapid toner and this is going to help cancel out a lot of the warmth so there are pieces that didn't get as light as others so i mixed this to be a little bit more on the pigment pigmented side i was going for more of like a medium gray violet as far as the how much pigment we added into this toner to help cancel out some of the warmth because honestly some pieces here they got to a level i would say some of them are seven a majority of her hair though is a level eight and nine and some pieces are a level 10 so this is going to have a mixture of some pieces that look a little bit gray and some pieces that look a little bit more neutral Alrighty guys, so here is her finished look. You can see that some pieces of her hair definitely do look slightly grayish toned and overall her hair looks so much lighter and so much more ashier. We gave her a nice trim to kind of get rid of her split ends and dead ends that she had, um, but overall she was really happy. And I feel like this is going to be the lightest that her hair will be um, for a little bit until it gets a little bit healthier, which was totally fine because she loved this color. So she will probably be coming back in about like 12 to 14 weeks to retouch her roots to maintain the same color. Alrighty guys, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. And as always, I will talk to you guys next week.